Hi, I'm Wes Allen with DM Tales, and today I'm going to be doing something just a little bit different. We're going to look at the first edition of Gamma World by rolling up a character. Let's roll it. So I'm going to demonstrate how Gamma World rules work by rolling up a character rather than just doing a review of the rulebook. I thought that might be a little bit more interesting. So this is a character sheet that I created inside iWork Numbers. You can use any spreadsheet for something like this, but it has the basic information on it. Uh, character name, character type, and there are three types of characters in Gamma World First Edition. They are mutated animals, mutated humans or humanoids, and pure strain humans who are unmutated stock from before the fall of civilization. As with all TSR games of the time, or all kind of Dungeons & Dragons style games from TSR at the time, there are six core attributes, only they are a little bit different than they are in Advanced Dungeons & Dragons or Old BX. You have no wisdom, for example, but you do have mental strength. And uh, oh, down here on my sheet, I put a basic summary of what each attribute is used for in the game. So your mental strength in this game is takes place of the wisdom score, and it's how you track your abilities at mental combat, both defense and offense. This is how your mutations come into play. And there's an attack matrix for that that shows you what you're going to need to hit based on comparing those two scores. Uh, your intelligence score functions very much the same way that it does in Dungeons & Dragons. Only your modifier here is for artifact exam. There are flow charts in Gamma World, depending on the complexity of the technology that you uncover during your adventures, that you have to roll through to figure out if your character can work this device or not. And some of the results of the dice can be bad and lead to things like explosions and death, and others of them lead to, well, I figured out how to use this finally. The thing about those flowcharts is your lower rolls are actually more desirable, so your intelligence modifier here gives a negative modifier instead of a plus. Dexterity, again, is your ability to move. Only look in the notes here. It is your melee to hit bonus that you get from a high dexterity, not a ranged weapon to hit bonus from a high dexterity. Also, your dexterity is used in initiative. The people with the higher dexterity will go first in order. Uh, instead of just rolling for randomness. So having a high dexterity is very advantageous in this game. Charisma functions almost exactly the way that it does in Dungeons and & Dragons. And in fact, there are, just like AD&D, there are three basic modifiers for charisma. Uh, your max followers, your moral adjustment, and, or excuse me, that should be, let's fix that your morale adjustment, and your reaction adjustment. So when you're rolling a traditional 2d6 on a reaction table, uh, a high charisma will give you a better score or a chance of getting a favorable response. The way that you roll your attributes in Gamma World is you roll a 4d6 and you drop the, the lowest number. The reason for this is because Gamma World is by far more dangerous to a starting party than Dungeons and Dragons is. It, it can be brutal. And so uh, they want to give you as good a chance as possible to having decent scores. And in fact, they tell you that if your character doesn't have bonuses, you probably just need to throw it away because they'll die and that might not be fun. So let's go ahead and try rolling our stats really quick. Roll a 4d6 and drop. We're starting out well. We have a 17 mental strength. That's really good. Roll for intelligence, a 13 intelligence, which is, you know, the higher end of average. A 13 dexterity. These are really good scores for me. So no bonuses. I'll tell you that in a minute. A 14 charisma. That might actually get us a bonus. The charisma table works a little differently. I can show that to you. A 14 constitution, that is important, because constitution functions as your hit dice. So the higher constitution you have, the more d6s you get to roll for your potential hit points. So if you have a low constitution, you have potentially a greater chance to have really low hit points. 
So I think that's an interesting way to use Constitution in this game. There's no modifier to it. That just is your hit dice. And finally, let's look at your physical strength for this character. Yeah, they have high mental strength, and um, they're, they're not very strong. So they're going to be doing uh, not good damage. So let's look at what the modifiers are going to be. Nothing modifying for mental strength, because again, that all comes into play in the mental attack matrix, although 17 is a really good score and will help you out immensely. Intelligence, uh, artifact exam, a 13 is average, because in Gamma World, really the bonuses start at 15 for everything but charisma. So the modifier there is zero. Dexterity, the same thing, a 13. So it's not like basic and expert D&D, &D where uh, your bonuses start at 13. There are no modifiers on this chart for Charisma. We'll look at that in a second. And uh, there's no modifiers for Constitution because, again, that's your hit dice. Physical Strength is 5, which now is going to be a negative modifier for your melee damage. So the rules as written say that anything below 7 or anything above 15 will give you a plus. So if you, uh, if you roll a 15, uh, technically speaking, the way that it's written, there's no modifier for that. But then 16 is plus 1, 17 is plus 2, and 18 is plus 3. In the same way, it says that anything that is lower than a 6 will get you a negative modifier. However, the way that I read the tables is I tend to want to start giving bonuses at 15, and I get that from the charisma table here. It seems that that follows more the AD&D convention, and so it might not technically be rules as written, but that's how I'm going to interpret it. And what you're going to find as you go through the Gamma World 1st Edition rules is that a lot is led up to referees' discretion. So for physical strength, anything under 6 is going to be a negative, but I'm going to say 6 is minus 1, and 5 would be minus 2. So this person does not want to get in melee combat at, uh, like, if at all possible. The 14 Charisma, however, if you look at the Charisma chart, at 14, they have a plus 1 to morale and a plus 1 to reactions on both. So I'm going to put those in for that. And they have a max followers of six. So just like in D&D, you want to have followers around to do things like help lug the load. They're not necessarily there to do combat, but they're there to kind of make sure that you can move when you get into it. And that's kind of a good way to do it. So this is the base character sheet right here. Uh, I'm going to want us to roll some mutations, which is essentially what takes the place of magic in Gamma World. So I'm going to make us a humanoid. We have zero XP at this point, and I won't give a name right now. Uh, also, if you are used to old school games, Gamma World uses descending armor class. So your unarmored armor class is 10. And that's how that begins. So there's the base. Uh, what we do want to do is roll our hit dice. So we have a constitution of 14. Let's roll 14 D6s and find out what we get. Rolled pretty good. 59 hit points to start. And you can see right away, your starting hit points is 59. This is because if you encounter someone who is using an ancient weapon, the damage it can do is immense. And so you need to be able to survive that. And so this is the way the game is balanced a little bit. All right, so let's look at mutations then. Get back over here. So there are two kinds of mutations in the game. The first is physical mutations, and the second is mental mutations. In the rules as written, there are two ways that you can roll them. And the one that I prefer is to roll a 1d4 for each type of mutation, physical and mental, and that number is the corresponding number of mutations that you're going to get. So let's roll, oh, four physical mutations, which is unfortunate given the fact that this person is a weakling. Uh, and let's roll for mental mutations. And four mental mutations. Now, you might be saying to yourself right off the bat, oh, this is awesome, and I'm so excited, and uh, this is going to be absolutely incredible. Well, it could, but if you look at the mutation page, one of the things that you can see is all these mutations that have D next to it. And what these are are defects. And the more times you roll on this percentile table to determine which mutation you get, 
the more chances you have of getting a defect, which can really depower your character in a sense uh, and make them much more fragile. So we're going to roll four times on the physical mutations chart to see what physical mutations we get. Let's clear our dice. And we'll look at the descriptions a little later. But we start with an 18. And heightened taste is our first physical mutation. And let's clear the dice and we'll roll for our second. 88. Now here is a problem. 88 to 89 is a defect. Weight decrease. We'll have to see what that does. But usually that means you're not going to be able to carry as much. But let's find out what's going on here. Let's roll for our third mutation. See how we do. 63. <laughs> Two defects. 63 is poor respiratory system. Let's do our fourth. Let's hope we get a good one this time. 74. Shorter. So not only do they have a weight decrease, they are a bit shorter. Not sure how that does. Oh, this is a defect, so we need to put that there. And we'll look at the uh, description of these in alphabetical order here. Heightened taste. Mutants with this ability can detect poisons at a touch of the tongue and can determine whether any given substance is edible. That's our one really positive mutation. So I'm going to copy that. I'll put this in here. Poor respiratory system. This mutant has trouble getting needed oxygen into the bloodstream, making him weaker and requiring him short rest after fighting for five melee turns. Failure to rest after five rounds of combat causes this mutant to faint for one to six minutes after the sixth melee turn. That's definitely... So we already knew that the uh, mutant did not have really good strength. So you don't want to be in melee, but this really means that this person should absolutely not be in melee. I'm just going to put that description in there. There we go. Now, shorter. Let's see that one. To determine how short to make this mutant, roll a percentile dice two times. Oh, 2d10 for two times for 0 to 99 results. Treat 0 as 0 rather than 100 as usual. Add the two results together. This gives the mutant's height in centimeters. Okay. So, we need to roll 1d100 plus 1d100. That should work. And 157 centimeters tall. The change decreases the metabolic rate of the mutant and also causes a marked reduction in the ability to do damage to opponents in physical combat. Such small mutants will find it very hard to will be very hard to hit in combat. Their effort is to determine what these effects will be. So this is an, an issue that Gamma World has in general in the first edition. So much is left to the referee. I have no mechanics of what to do. So what I can try to do is import concepts from AD&D or 5th edition or something like that that give AC bonuses for people of different sizes. So why don't we do like a minus 2 AC um, against normal height minus 3 versus large creatures. You see, this is all me making this up on the fly. Now, not only are they shorter, they're lighter. So let's figure that one out. Weight decrease. This weakens the mutant so that it is slowed by one-fourth in every endeavor, with its physical strength reduced by one-fourth as well. Oh, shoot! So essentially, one-fourth physical strength? Their physical strength is one? Well, we're going to round it up. We're going to do two. So if 6 is minus 1, 5 is minus 2, 4 is minus 3, oh my gosh, 3 is minus 4, a minus 5. Oh dear, this poor creature. Yeah, this might be a completely unusable character, but this is the randomness of the game. So those are the physical mutations, not a really strong creature. So let's clear the dice really quick. And uh, let's go ahead and we're going to roll four D100s for our mental mutations. And we get a nine. Devolution, or de-evolution. That sounds ominous, but it doesn't say it's a, a defect. 
We'll look at that in a second. Let's clear and roll for our second one. 94, will force. So now we're showing a little bit better. Two non-defective mutations in the mental table. 78, repulsion field. So hey, we're rolling pretty good. And one last roll. Let's roll good, no whammies. 57. 57 is mental blast. So those are our four mental mutations, and every one of them is positive. Let's look at them in alphabetical order. So de-evolution. De-evolution is the power to strip mental abilities from a mutant opponent by regressing it along ancestral lines. If this power works, treat it as a mental attack. It begins by taking away permanently the opponent's greatest special ability, referee's choice, on every subsequent melee turn, another special ability is thus removed until the mutant opponent is returned to its original stock. It lasts for the duration of one combat situation, however long that may take, has a range of 30 meters and be, may be used once a week. That is kick butt. There we go. All right, let's look up Mental Blast. Mental Blast is the ability to launch a mental assault or three dice, d6 of damage, on any being within 15 meters. It may be used every other melee turn. That is a kick butt mental mutation right there. All right, so now we got to check out the repulsion field. Repulsion field. This is similar to a force field, only a repulsion field may be formed up to 15 meters away from the mutant and may be used to surround or trap other beings. In all other respects, it functions like a force field. Indeed, a mutant with this ability could use it exactly like a force field if he so desires, and it could be termed an improved force field. So you have to look up the force field rules in order to figure out how this works. So, again, very loose on the rules here. You get to have a lot of leeway in what you want to do. So will force is the ability, through sheer force of will, to double any one of the mutant's abilities, it can be used in conjunction with any other power, or it may be used to add one point to the mutant's two-hit die rolls. It lasts from 1d10 melee turns, may be used only once every 24 hours. So this character has some kick butt mutations mentally and terrible, terrible physical mutations. So you would think at some level, with a minus five melee damage, uh, that this character would be unplayable, but with those mental abilities really bolster it. So it makes it a rather interesting character to play. It's shorter. It is physically weaker. It is lighter. Uh, but you're going to underestimate it to your peril because it can do some serious damage. And I think that's really kind of a compelling thing. I'm not going to go over equipment right here, although I do want to point out one thing. In weapons, there is this concept of a class. So one of the interesting things about the way that Gamma World deals with experience and bonuses is that you don't level up to automatically get a better two hit score. Uh, that is changed by your prime attributes as they change. Uh, but really what's going to affect your ability to hit something is your class of weapon. The reason why Gamma World does this is because you're going to be encountering cultures in this world that might be pre-industrial and have things like muskets. Uh, all the way down to folks who are just using clubs and are essentially Stone Age, all the way through to the far future and things that we can only dream of, like androids and mini rockets and tactical nuclear weapons. So your ability to hit something is going to be determined by your weapons class. If you have a club and you're going up against somebody with powered armor, uh, your to hit is going to be not really high. It's not going to be a high percentage. And I think that that's an interesting way that Gamma World's trying to deal with this vast disparity in technological level. If you look at the attack matrix, however, it gets a little bit confusing. Again, for folks who are used to dealing with Ascending Armor class, which I do think is a better mechanic overall, you look at this matrix and you just go, why don't I just get a bonus depending on what weapon I'm using? So that's something that's worth keeping in mind. Also, the Core Gamma World rulebook does not have a full list of equipment that you can use. It just has examples. Here's an example list. If you get the referee's screen, there is a more filled out list of items that you can get and how much they are worth. 
And so that's kind of worked into it through that other supplement, but it is a glaring omission in the rule book itself. Also, there are no rules in Gamma World for starting equipment. You don't roll 3d6 and times it by 10 to get your gold or domars, which is the plastic coin that was used in the ancient times and is still accepted as currency in the present in Gamma World. Instead, your starting equipment is all determined by narrative. So there's a lot of freedom in this because you can set up your system and have the player characters being part of a community. They're getting sent out to do something and here's what we're going to give you to start out. So you can give them more stuff or less stuff depending on what type of game you want to run. I kind of get why Gamma World went this way and somebody put it this way. The equipment that you want is out there. You have to go find it. So it's a plus or a minus, take it or leave it. Some people have worked out ways to bring in starting cash and equipment list and things like that. Again, this is all left up to the referee, however they want to deal with it. But basically, this character is done. Just give the character a name. You have the mental and physical mutations. You have the prime attribute scores done. Hit points have been rolled. Uh, armor class is there. Everything else that you're going to do is going to happen inside game, and that includes kidding out. Gamma World is just such a compelling system, a compelling environment in which to play, and I keep coming back to it just mentally over the years, and I kind of like it. Next week, I think I'm going to be looking a little bit at some software that I've been using to create some maps. But until then, happy playing, everybody.